Hey, I'm Dylan, and in this video, I'm going to be replacing this crusty banged up dining table with a brand spanking new one. So my partner and I rent our house and this garage that's connected to it, which I use as my workshop. And we found out about a month ago that the owner of the house was selling to a developer and that our house is going to get demolished and replaced with some townhouses. Obviously we were pretty disappointed to have to move houses and I've also got to find a new workshop which is a bit of a bummer as a renter. But I'm sure something will pop up that will work. Anyway, that's partly the reason I decided to build this table. I collected all this wood from a house that was being demolished across the street from us. Oh, I think our whole street's getting the exact same treatment. And essentially I didn't want to transfer all this wood in individual bits to somewhere I'm not even sure we'll have a workshop space. And I've wanted to replace our dining table for a little while, so this seemed like the perfect opportunity to kill two birds with one stone. So far what you've seen me do is prepare the legs, so after dealing with all the nails, I've jointed and then planed these pieces down and then I can lay out my template and then cut them to shape. Before I finish off shaping the bandsaw, I'm going to cut off the corner of these pieces. It's going to end up being a really heavy round over on this, and I want to get rid of the bulk of the material at the table saw just to save my router and route a bit, but I need to make this cut now before I lose that flat surface by finishing off the shaping at the bandsaw. It's a little bit hard to explain, um, hopefully that sort of makes sense though. Usually I'd use my template to get down to the final shape on legs like this, but these are super thick and it would be pretty annoying to route this down. And it's always nice to crack out the hand plane and I don't mind if each leg is a tiny bit different. And using a hand plane is always quieter and cleaner and just more satisfying. I'm basing the design of this table off a chair I made a little while ago. I'm still honing the design of the chair a little bit, but I think the bones will remain quite similar. To match the table to the chairs, I want to have a bit of a curve to the aprons, and generally just have a sense of softness without it being fully rounded. So here I'm cutting out those curves that will be in the short end apron. And to join these aprons to the legs, I'm going to be using the ever trusty domino. After the first assembly had dried, I could move on to the longer aprons. There was a lot of sorting through timber on this project to try and find pieces that weren't completely full of holes or destroyed by that claw thing that the demo people use. I'm not entirely sure what timbers these are, but I think there's some jarrah, some ironbark, black butt, and probably a bunch of other eucalypts that were used for building Queenslanders in the mid 1900s. Whatever it is, it's really hard and it's really heavy and it's pretty crazy that people used to build houses from this. I can't imagine how much more difficult it would have been to build with this wood compared with the crappy pine they use these days. 
So I gave these pieces a light plane to see what the colour was looking like. Um, early in the build, I thought I could colour match these pieces, but I pretty quickly realised that it was just going to be a bit of a colour hodgepodge mess, and I sort of just ended up leaning into it. Normally that would annoy me, but I think it ended up working out on this one, and it sort of made it a bit more interesting. So here I'm using some plywood to help draw the arc on the longer aprons. And the old nail trick is always a good one to get the pivot point of whatever you're using to help draw an arc. This whole table build was generally pretty straightforward, but this next step was maybe the most tricky part. I need to put a cross member between both longer aprons for some extra stability, and I decided to use a sliding dovetail instead of just slapping in a couple of dominoes. Partly because it's a stronger joint in this scenario, but partly because I just wanted to give it a go as well. I'm gonna route out most of this slot with a template bit, and here I'm setting out some guides for the template to run against. And the reason I'm cutting these in now is once the whole table leg assembly has been glued together, it'll just be a bit more difficult for me to cut these parts in. So after squaring off these slots with a chisel, I need to figure out how to cut the dovetails in. So here I'm setting the dovetail bit where I want it to route, then I'm marking where my router base extends to, then I can cut a spacer block that is the same distance as that, which just helps me put this guide block in accurately for each cut. And then I can just come along with a chisel and finish off these slots. So now that I've finished cutting these dovetail slots in, I can get these longer aprons glued in. But before I do that, I need to round over the outside of these legs. And I don't know why I didn't do this earlier before I glued everything together, but this was really awkward. And now it's time to revel in a time-lapse of a clumsy one-man table glue-up. I was pretty organised with all my straps and clamps, so it actually went together fairly well, but it was still a bit of a juggling act. So the next day, once the glue had dried, I could get on with the dovetailed cross member. After getting it cut to length, I can measure the depth of the slot that I've cut already. And then using the same bit, I make sure it's at the right height. So this is actually a scrap piece that I used to dial in the correct fit, um, as I somehow deleted the footage of me cutting the actual cross piece, but it's exactly the same process. Once it's fitting nicely, I can measure up the height of this shoulder and then just cut it off with a handsaw so that it all sits nice and flush with the rest of the table frame. I'm moving on with the tabletop now and I'm gluing up these in three separate bits so that they'll each fit through my thicknesser.
and you can really see from a couple of these shots just how gnarly this wood is. After planing these individual pieces to their final thickness, I glued them up into the full tabletop. And again, I accidentally deleted a bit of footage of that. I guess the uh, imminent workshop move had me rushing a little bit, but just imagine me smearing glue and squeezing some bits of wood together. Once the tabletop had all dried up, I had plenty of holes that I needed to deal with. On a previous project, I used some crushed charcoal and epoxy to fill knot holes, and that worked really well, so I'm gonna do that again here. And I'm just using some quick set two-part epoxy that you just get from a hardware store. And I made sure that these holes didn't have any dust or debris in them just so that the epoxy had a good bond. While that dried, I'm adding a soft round over to the inside of the legs and the aprons. As the tabletop's gonna be flush with the base, I'm gonna add a small rebate around the top of the base. This is a fairly common move on a table like this. My aim initially is to have the tabletop be the exact size of the base, but over the seasons, there'll be a bit of expansion and contraction. And without a rebate, the inevitable lip that would be between the bottom and the top would be much more obvious. And I think it's also quite a nice little detail. Here I'm adding some corner brace pieces. This is just to help with adding a bit of extra rigidity to the frame. So this is the underside of the table and there's a few pretty massive cracks. And even though they're in the middle, I reckon you'll still probably sort of go wandering with your hand and be able to feel them. And I'm gonna to have to do something about that. I don't have anywhere near enough epoxy to fill in these voids and as it's the underside I don't really care what it looks like. And I decided that routing a big cutout here and then gluing in a patch of wood would probably be the easiest way of covering these gaps. I could feel the end of this build approaching and I really just couldn't be bothered dealing with this but I knew that if I didn't I'd regret it. I'm using fine nails to hold down these bits of plywood. There's already plenty of tiny holes on the underside and I just didn't want to have to deal with any potential issues of that double-sided tape coming loose. I was gluing this piece of wood in before work one morning and I didn't want to fire up any of my saws to make this a slightly more appropriate thickness, which ended up being really annoying when it came to bringing it flush with the underside. Planing this down didn't actually take all that long and I had quite an aggressive cut set up on the plane, but it was still a pretty reasonable arm workout. It came time to trim the tabletop to its final size, and I probably could have been a bit bolder here and used my circular saw with some sort of guide. The jigsaw was fine, and it's probably the safest option to avoid actually digging into the table apron, but it left a lot more cleanup to do later on with my router. 
Flash trimming the side grain here with my router isn't really an issue at all. But routing the end grain is really nasty and it's a pretty quick way of blunting a route a bit or just getting tear out. I really didn't want to flash trim around these corners so I just hand sawed most of it and then off camera I finished the rounding with the hand sander. Most of the tabletop was crack free, but one of the bits of Jarrah, I think, had a bit of a crack in it, which I was a little bit worried would open up over time. So I decided I would cut a dovetail key to help it stay together. And I'm using this piece of silky oak, which I think is a nice contrast to the red of the Jarrah. And I know that a dovetail key is a little bit divisive and usually I don't really like seeing them, but again, this table's for me and when else to be bold than when you're making something for yourself. Using a knife to mark this out is almost essential, I think. Using a pencil just doesn't leave a crisp enough line and when you're cleaning it up with a chisel, you're pretty much guaranteed to get a few gaps. And despite my struggles with autofocus, you can sort of see here how that knife line gives a nice obvious reference point for the chisel to fall into. And that's a little bit more clear on this shot here. And I'm just taking a few small shavings off the corners of the underside of the dovetail key. It just helps it slot into the hole a little bit easier. Now I will admit here I got my grain direction wrong with this key. It shouldn't have snapped this way. The grain should be running 90 degrees to the way that it snapped but fingers crossed the glue will do the trick. After sanding the base, mostly off camera as it's incredibly boring, I'm finishing the base of the table with boiled linseed oil. After sanding the tabletop up to 240 grit, I'm finishing with a hard wax oil. I'm pretty curious to try one of those ceramic finishes at some point down the track, just to see how much extra protection I get, but for the time being, I think this will be durable enough of a finish. I didn't have enough figure eight fasteners on hand to attach the whole tabletop, so I just decided I'd use a few of these bracket thingies to just give me a bit of extra hold down pressure. And I did eventually tighten this screw a bit more than what I'm showing here.
In this shot, I'd given the whole tabletop a light sand, and off camera, I gave it another coat of oil. And once I'd screwed everything down, the table was done and dusted. Thanks for watching.